What's happening, Pimpin? Welcome back to On The Real. This is Rob Black and my man Vlad. He's here with me. What's How up? Doing, man? Yo, I'm All good. Right. I'm good. I'm good. We've kept you waiting. Let's go, Civil War, right now. Let's, let's get into go. it. Let's get into it. So, first off, let's talk about the hype that preceded the movie. Well, I was so hyped. My expectations yes. were over the over the top, right? Everybody. And the everybody, hype was so real. I mean, again, how many videos did we make about this oh, very yeah, subject? Oh, yeah, like, oh, the hype yeah. was so real. It's not just a good superhero movie. It's, it's amazing. an amazing film. It's amazing. It's, the story is fantastic. The, the the way the characters are developed Talk is fantastic. The writing makes sense. It's actually, it doesn't feel uh, overwhelming. Shit. And um, oh my God, the way this movie is directed... Yeah. Wow. Let's talk about the direction because you touched a little bit upon that. Yes. The Russo brothers did an excellent fucking job. I mean, this movie is all about friendship and vengeance. Yeah. That's all it's about. And you can see how every piece of that puzzle connects to each other by one way or another, or maybe even both of them, by and, friendship and vengeance. And another thing I really like is amazing. the fact that the movie starts with the, th with the thematics of friendship and vengeance and doing the right thing and ends with the symptomatic and they actually never really solve those issues right they 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 it ends with the conflict and them trying to resolve it and they're just not able to do it but and that's the reality of this movie is they take the conflicts all the conflicts that happened previously and all the other Marvel movies they all have an impact in this very movie they do it, they really do they really do we're going to talk more about it later on but you see that every action has a consequence even the I, I even, even the actions shot. that we were that we were actually hyped about you're exactly. probably about to mention Hulk the Hulk yeah. exactly yeah. you Hulk. already know you so shit, listen yeah. in the Avengers remember when Cap goes Hulk Smash, and you just see Hulk just smashing everything. There's yeah. a shot in this movie that shows that someone was on the street filming the Hulk smashing. And while Hulk is jumping from building to building, all the rubble comes down and crushes people. He kills people while we're cheering for him in the Avengers. And all of this comes right back to it. It gives that gritty sense of all the consequences being applied to this movie, coming right back to this movie, and informing the motivations for the characters in this movie. And then you actually feel like you're in the character's shoes because you look at it and you're like, I didn't think about it this way. Yeah. I was fucking hype when yeah, I was Yeah, no, how many choices? Let, let me ask you this. How many choices were you given in this movie? If you were that character in those shoes, how, how would you react? Because there's certain situations that I'm like, damn, if I was Tony right now, I would murder everything moving. Yeah. You know, and... That's pretty much what he tries That's to do. Tries to do. <laughs> you know? Again, so because I'm not mad at, at him. And the final conflict is not because you guys know that there, that Zemo is in this movie, but the final conflict, again, is not between the Avengers and some big bad entity. It's about them as characters, it's about the conflict, what drives them as characters, what drives them as human beings. And at the end, this is what the movie. Uh, this is how the movie concludes with them as human beings and where they are and how far they've involved and how much these events have actually changed them as people, you know, as exactly. heroes. Exactly, so, and that's exactly right. Yeah. As you said, the themes are the same from the beginning to the end, but there is an arc to these characters. You yes. see them change. You see them becoming different people. Even the team and the dynamics change, but everything is wrapped up so nicely that that's what I really enjoyed. This movie has my favorite action sequence of all time oh easy i'm, I'm easy, not even easy uh, it, it the airport pretty, yeah. scene the best action sequence but not I've even ever the airport scene. the airport scene is by far the best by far. action scene in this movie but but there's more uh, but even the way this movie starts it starts at like jason born you know yeah, what i mean in this other jason country or, yeah pretty much yeah. and we were to talk about some of the uh some other elements of um the uh action and the visuals that i really liked uh, the Scarlet, the Scarlet Witch visual effects were pretty fantastic. I really like. At first, I was a little skeptical about the whole like you know moving your hands like this. And oh whatever. yeah, But yeah. at the end of the movie, I'm like, that's that's actually pretty Yo, cool. Yo, Scarlet <laughs> Witch straight up Kamehameha's fucking vision through oh, yeah. like fifty feet of concrete and into the Earth's crust and shit. Zero oh my fucks god, given. zero fucks were given in this movie. All right, here's my take on the action. The action was spectacular. The fight choreography mm -hmm. was spectacular. Yeah. Everybody had, as I said before, everybody had a chance to shine, but every hero's own ability set and own powers were shown and emphasized in a special way, in a oh, very smart sorry way. Sorry to interrupt, but if you're going to talk about the visuals, 
yes. the actions, yeah. don't forget to talk about giant men because you got giant <laughs> men in this movie, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that's exactly oh, yeah. what I wanted to talk about. I mean. Every time you see these people fighting, they're using their powers in very unique and creative ways. I mean, there's a point where Captain loses his shield, but he thought this ahead and he had Ant-Man miniaturized inside his shield. So whenever he lost his shield, Ant-Man just pops up, hits whoever is holding the shield and tosses back to Captain America. Right. I mean, and that Paul, line. Paul Rudd as <laughs> Ant-Man. I, I need more of that. I need more of that. We all need more of that. Your shield, Captain no. America. <laughs> I mean, like, no one could have delivered that line like the way Paul Rudd But, did. I mean, the visuals and the acting, you see so much in-camera effects as well. I mean, there's a lot of special effects. There's a lot of CGI, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the fighting and everything, you see that the choreography was meant to be filmed and captured in camera without adding on later on. I mean, mm -hmm. there's not too much shaky cam and not too much jump cutting. There is no, a no. little bit of that. But, a little, yeah, but you know. the action is still pretty clear, very easy yes. to follow. Yes. Now, if we were to talk about some of the cons, because this, this is not a perfect movie, by no. any way, by, by any means. chance. But, but um, okay, if we're talking about some of the cons in that movie, is the fact that... Certain characters are given action sequences that make zero sense if you actually understand uh, the the background of the character and what the character can and cannot do. They, they One do of my a, major gripes. Yeah, they do a very good job. For example, when Vision fights Hawkeye, which by the way we get we got to see some fights mm -hmm. between characters that we never imagined would fight, and then like Spider Man fought Giant Man, Hawkeye oh, fought yeah. Vision. Anyway, between the fight between Vision and Hawkeye. They, they did some pretty cool stuff, but they made it clear that Vision cannot cannot be overpowered by Hawkeye by any means. No. Any, any means. Actually, the but only one that can handle Vision Scarlet is Scarlet Witch, Witch yeah. which makes sense. Which makes sense. Yes. But then you have Black Widow fighting Ant-Man, also known as Giant Man, and, you know... Like, well, now or, you're touching on something I wanted to talk yeah, about. Or is, surviving that tank scene. And, yeah. yeah. Black Widow in general, that's one of my major cons in this movie. I don't think they know what to do with Black Widow. And that's mm. really sad to say because she represents a big portion of the demographic. I mean, she's one of the few she female was heroes. But you she know? was also us as in the audience. The, exactly. the normal person the normal, who just exactly. so fits she, in. And you this, live yeah. through this character because she represents the audience, as you yeah. said. But they just don't know what to do with her. I mean, her scenes are shot very well, but every time she's fighting, you're like, she's a normal human. Yes, she's trained as an assassin and everything, yeah. but, but there's, there's no so way she could re survive half the shit she's been through there's in There's only movie. so much she can survive I mean, as a human being. Exactly. Yeah. She survives a grenade to the face. I mean, not technically to the face, but within a tank, within a closed environment, she survives a grenade and just walks off. With and her starts, nice little, you know, jacket, you know. And starts fighting and crossbones. And just first starts fighting crossbones, metal, against skin, like it's nothing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I just don't think they know what to do with her. I mean, she had, thematically and within the story, she had the least impact, I think, mm -hmm. honestly. I mean, there is one scene where she makes it uh, makes a choice and everything. But, I mean, I don't think they really know what to do with her. And that's one of the major cons of this movie to me. Her fight scenes were not totally believable within the concepts of a human yeah and her her impact on the whole story at large wasn't that really that great to okay. me nice. that, so that's one of the cons honestly but uh i found that i, I understood what they tried to do because in the original civil war uh, comic run they had that um they had spider-man being the guy in the middle who really didn't know that he was pretty much our eyes as the readers or the audience and trying to understand like what fight, what side was actually better, and understanding that there were pros and cons at, um, in both sides. And she's actually supposed to, she's actually supposed to serve as this character in this movie. But I felt a little disconnected sometimes because all I could think about was. Well, technically, you're not even supposed to be here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, like, hey, it is like, what it is. But what it is. let's talk about that. Let's talk about the acting. Everybody in this movie, Every, everybody, everybody in this in. movie yeah. went in. Yeah. They came to play. They suited up, like literally suited the suited fuck up, up yeah. and came to play. And they did their thing. I mean, who, who do you think ran away with it? Or give me your two top breakout stars of this movie. Okay. I... I have to say the the, the the like the two top or top three or whatever. Whatever. I'll, I'll go with it for top. Three. Yeah. Number one, Robert da Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. I think it's his best performance as Tony Stark ever. 
I don't think he's ever pulled on the suit the way he did in this movie. This was a character who was trouble, who was conflicted, who was trying to do the right thing in a very different Tony Stark than the Tony Stark we've seen in the first Iron Man movie. Like you can tell that the events has have the the events that took place in his life have actually changed him. And Robert Downey Jr. did a fantastic job uh, incarnating this uh, incarnating to this, this character. This is true. Um, Second, uh, the second one I'd go, of course, of course, Chris Evans as Captain America, uh, because. <laughs> but again, yeah. Well, but listen, again, it's this Talk, is what this is what it. I like the fact that there, he's also a very different character than the one we've seen in the original Captain America. Yes, if true. you think about it, Iron Man in the first Iron Man is against the government, and Captain America in the first Iron Man movie is for the government. He's pro America. He's like America is the shit, you know. Yes, but. Now they kind of switch sides, and you can tell that the events that they've been through and the, the challenges that, that that they've had to face in the past have actually changed them in a way that, um, although they were the same challenges, but because they came from different places, they were both thinking maybe I should be on the other side, and it's kind of it's kind of very interesting to see uh, both actors playing. Uh, playing off each other's like that, you know what I mean? You can see the duality. I can see the duality, and, of I, and course. so so they become two they they, they become two face of a uh, two different sides of the same coin, but they kind of interchange and become different sides of the same coin, and but it's still within the same environment of the same ideology that just gets broken into different ideas of who's right and who's wrong, and that was that's what I mean. Like this movie is a movie that you can actually dissect into. Uh, philosophical, sociological, um, you know, um, uh, uh, topics, and the actors kind of understood that, and you can tell that this is not this was not just something that they went out to just to have fun with. This is something that they took very seriously in terms of acting performances, and this is like Oscar worthy level of acting. Of course, it's a comic book movie, so it's, it's not a comic be, book. You movie, know what I mean? Right? But, I know. I mean, like I know they what really mean, considered yes. it as okay. This is about. The characters. This is not about finding a giant bad guy at the end. This is about the characters and this what goes through their mind. And that's when you understand, like, whoa, they, they must have studied those characters in depth, you know? And that's what I loved about this movie, talking about the way that they chose to do this. I mean, we have all know that Marvel has a problem with bad guys. I mean, yeah. they, they, they had Loki. In this movie, excellent. they're like, fuck it. <laughs> they had Loki. He was excellent. I mean, they have the big bad guy, the death god that's still to come. So in the meantime, it's really hard to fill out that space because you have you have the charismatic villain and you have the big death god already taken up. You know, they tried with Ultron, but it didn't work here. They completely sidestepped this issue. What they did is they made a character piece. If you really think about it, this whole movie is a character piece. And the, the bad guy, Baron Zemo, in this movie is a product and a result of all the other movies that we've seen before. So. It fits in within the theme of friendship and consequences and revenge and everything else. And I think Daniel Bruhl played that excellently. So I have to tip my hat off to him. His I really acting like, game I really was like really him well also, done. I really like him also as Zemo. Because some people are complaining about uh, the arc of his character. I didn't like the way he was developed in the movie. But ultimately, he's the ultimate genius. When he says, when he tells Black Panther, "Listen, I know I can't kill the Avengers. Stronger, stronger men, men than, than me have, have tried. tried. Yes, and all I can do was get them, was getting them to kill each other. And at the end, they're like, how did you, how did you feel about the fact that your plan failed? And it's like, you did it now? You did it. And you look at it, and to me, I compare it to Joker. At the end, Joker made it seem in the Dark Knight. Joker made it seem like, ha, oh, you did the bosses. I didn't blow up the buses, whatever. But uh, I kind of won it. I still because won, while you exactly. were not watching, Harvey then became corrupted. And at the end, the team is broken. This is not the same team that This is seen. not the same team. And, at and, the end of this movie, things have changed. Yeah. People have left. Uh, dynamics have changed. I mean, there is a promise made at the end which says, hey, we're going to get right back together for, you know, the, for the end war. But as you said, that was really well done. On my side, as far as the acting goes... You know, you, you everybody knows. Oh, that was my everybody third one, knows. actually. That was my third everybody one. Everybody That was my third one. Chadwick Boseman as, as Black motherfucking Black, Black Panther. Panther. Yeah. Oh, my God. This guy, whoo! This guy is amazing. He had so many great lines. You want to say the line. I know you want to say the line. So go, go I, I, right. do. Go I do. I do. I do want to say the line. Let's go for it. Don't bother. I'll kill him myself. Damn, that was gangster! Oh, my yeah, God. It, it was he could have pulled up on you. 
But he ain't thought that was gangster. No. What he said was <laughs> real gangster. But he said, oh was my real God, that was amazing. Oh, yeah. His lines, he has so many quotable lines. His acting is amazing. I mean, people were indeed a little bit, you know, there was a little bit of uh, a backlash of the accent that he gave. And what do you I, think about uh, that? Listen, the accent, this is why, this is the point I've been trying to make is the fact that Wakanda is not a country unlike any African country. Although it is based in Africa, it is an African country. It's unlike any African country. It's the sense that they were really secluded. They were not really open. They didn't open their borders for a very long time. And as far as technologi- uh, th- technologically and uh, fi- fi- as far as education goes, they didn't need to open their borders either because they were so advanced, you know, as a society. And uh, even in the Marvel comics, they make a very clear point that Black Panther doesn't sound like anyone that they've ever heard of, you know? Uh, the Wakanda, they, they, they really sound different. Yes. And in this movie, what they did, they cre- they blended a few dial- uh, different accents and dialects together to create a new accent that we hadn't heard before. And I was all fine with it, you know? The, I was totally fine with it. And Everything having to do with Black Panther, as far as the acting, as far yeah. as his story, his introduction mm-hmm. was excellently handled. <laughs> I mean, to me, one of the greatest moments and the proudest moments was seeing King T'Chaka up there just talking to the UN I, if you really think about it he's fantastic. the one that was leading the UN delegation of 117 countries this african king just talking and saying we will not have any more any more disasters like happened in new york and washington and all the other disasters that were shown were that mm-hmm. involved the avengers in some way mm-hmm. shape or form he's the one leading that and then of course there's the assassination scene that i knew was going to happen and we see the development of Black Panther, his son. And everything about it was amazing. He kicked ass. He was going ham. He had the lines. And at the very end, he makes the most crucial, crucial choice. He knows that Baron Zemo was playing everybody else. And he has the greatest line of all. He says, The living are not done with you yet. The living are not done with you yet. But right before, he says, Vengeance is has oh, consumed yeah. you. It's consuming them downstairs while they're just beating each other up downstairs. He says, I am done letting it consume me. So he shows wisdom. He shows strength. He shows fearlessness. Because he is he's, not a superhero. Oh he's God. a super king. Oh That's what we're telling people. <laughs> like, this is not going to be a Black Panther who just jumps in, in, into conclusions and doesn't. He's a king of the most technologically That's what I really advanced like. nation in the MCU. Yes. The the nation who went to war against Atlantis and won. And won. You know? Yes. Like, no, but talk sorry. about it. Speaking of being a king, that was that made that line even whole oh my god, it made yeah. it so much doper because mm-hmm. imagine the leader of a country not saying, you know, I'm gonna send my armies against you or there's gonna be war. No, fuck that. He's like, yo, pimp, I got this. I'm gonna mm-hmm. handle this. I would kill him myself. <laughs> that's that, it. That's pretty oh much. Oh my like, god! That would that would have been like th- this is the uh par- this would be a parallel of Obama saying, "Don't worry, I'll find Ben Laden. I'll, I'll put a Glock in his mouth and I'll shoot him myself." You know what I mean? Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty like, much. It sounds like I'm exaggerating, but this is that's honestly exactly what, what happened. happened. The the leader of the nation just went on and said, "No, no, no, you guys can stay." And again, because people a lot, the average movie going audience doesn't uh, movie goer doesn't know that. Uh, who, what Wakanda is? If, but they get if the sneak army, peek. if the army of Wakanda was to chase the Avengers or Bucky or whatever, it wouldn't be fair. Mm. The Wakandan army is fucking nuts, my mm. nigga. Mm. The Wakandan army is nuts. Oh no, 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 no! It wouldn't have been fair. So know? let's talk about Spider Man now. We've all gushed about Black mm. Panther. Let's talk about Spider Man. Did you like him? I loved him. I mean, first off. Right off the bat, no origin story. Mm-hmm. They get through his whole backstory in about two minutes. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, some shit happens about six months ago. He didn't even say I got bit by a spider. He just says, I have these powers now. Deal with it. Movie was like, yeah, that's it. That's all you get. And I was fine with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many times have we seen the same backstory for Spider-Man? Yeah. We didn't need it. But everything about him, they went a different direction. They went with the young Peter Parker. In this movie, he has just had his powers for about six months. So he's still... He's still um, learning. learning. He's still Evolving, experimenting. Yeah. You even see his little shitty costume. That That's what I was talking about in the trailer review with the underoos joke. You see his little shitty costume made of like cut up like little uh, pajamas or whatever and these little swimming goggles. And 
you see that he's a, a amateur and then Tony Starks comes and says, you know, I'll got you. I'll put you under my wing. I got, you know, a whole remodel, you know, pimp my Spider-Man basically. And they, they that's what they did. They pimped his Spider-Man and he comes out with the new suit and he goes and helps it out. And everything about him is excellent. They they really captured that young adolescent Peter Parker. He's cracking jokes like everybody else is cracking jokes in the mm-hmm. MCU. But, you know, at a certain point, he's fighting Bucky. And then he's like, oh, wow, you have a metal arm? Cool. cool. You know, he's just going ham. He's a fanboy just like us. He says, hi, Cap. I mean, I, I'm a great fan and everything. Mid-fight. I mean... The, everything about Spider-Man was talk, amazing. You're not supposed to talk so much in the fight. Oh, my bad. Uh, my bad. <laughs> and one of the best things, and speaking of Giant Man, let's talk about Giant Man now. In the airport scene, mm-hmm. Ant-Man goes giant. But before that, he has an amazing moment. He has an amazing you moment. You see him as a you know, miniature Ant-Man, like running, saying, I, I know how I'm going to distract him. I'm going to do something. It's kind of big. I've never done it before. I haven't done it many times before, but mm-hmm. if it doesn't work. And then the, the camera um, uh, takes a wide shot of him running on this little um, uh, on this little uh, platform, and he's like not even two centimeters no. in. He's like not even two centimeters in, but he looks super intense as he's running, and then he jumps, and he becomes... Giant man, and then he becomes giant man, and he grabs War Machine. But the best thing about that whole thing is Spider Man's. No, just before the lap, Spider Man's reaction was priceless. It's exactly what everybody felt. How we react. Holy shit! And then, <laughs> Pretty much. And exactly. then you have Ant Man just, ah, that, just laughing. That laugh drunk was... with his own power. <laughs> yes. That was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. That sequence right there, oh my god, made me crack up, made me laugh, die laughing. And everything about Paul Rudd actually, he has very, very Paul little Rudd. time on this game. But he screen, kills it. But he kills it. He shines. The jokes are on point. He his interactions, especially with Falcon, calling him Tic Tac and saying, <laughs> you know, hey, my, my bad for last time, man. Speaking of interaction, the best. The, okay, the movie is about Captain America and his conflict with Iron Man and Tony, right? Um, but the best chemistry I've seen on screen in this movie is between Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes. It was. Fucking it hilarious. was hilarious. This buddy cop hilarious. chemistry is like, I fucking hate you. I hate you I too. Hate God you damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was excellent. That was actually excellent. You're very right. I mean, everybody, as far as acting goes, all the character goes top notch. Yeah. Great, great, great and, results and all across the board. Just listening to uh, something, the, the score uh, composed by Henry Jackman yes. uh, for this movie, um, there's. A significant moment in the score is four notes, and it repeats itself throughout different nuance, nuances throughout the movie. Um, they're very, very, very loud, very soft, and it kind of made me feel like this was a more mature movie because um, it was a little darker and a little more serious than what I've heard so far in the MCU. If you compare it to what you heard in the Avengers, you know the da 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 da. No, this was different. This was like this was this like was very dark. people are about to get destroyed emotionally and physically, and some that's people true. actually do get destroyed emotionally and physically. And in this that's movie. very true. And I actually felt it throughout the room. Just thinking about it, I'm just there like, who? The score is very heavy, and it kind of fits in very. It, not kind of. It really fits in very well into this movie and I feel like this is actually even there you understand that this is something very different that they were experimenting with that uh, with uh, this movie and in, in the sense that um, they were not trying to hype you up with it they were trying to tell you like yeah this is a fight but instead of playing the super drums and hyping it, hyping it up they want you to understand that those are friends. This fight is dramatic. This is not... We had fun watching it, but so, at certain moments, they wanted you to remember, especially when um, War Machine gets knocked out of the sky. Oh, and my God. And they wanted you... That was, that was what heart-wrenching. And they wanted you to, um, to remember that this is not totally fun. This is really sad. You That's know, especially true. the fact that they did that to each other. They, they did it to each other. That's you know? true. The soundtrack and the score, all in all, as you said, it emphasizes the emotion of a scene. It emphasizes the action that you're mm-hmm. seeing on scene. But not only that, but I love the subtle way that they blended each character's theme songs together. Mm-hmm. Especially anytime you hear you hear Black Panther before you see him, which ties into this whole hunter, like predator. At a certain point, the first time you see him in costume in the movie, 
all you see is a shadow right above Bucky yeah. coming in, and then you a hear predator. you hear his theme song, and then you see him. It's really a hunter, and everybody else is the same way. Same for Spider Man, same for Iron Man, same for Cap as well. Everybody's score was really nicely nuanced together to give that impression whenever you saw them on screen. So very great on that end as well. So let's talk about pros and cons about this movie. Mm -hmm. If I were to tell you, give me two pros and two cons that you thought really defined this movie. Action writing. This is a serious movie that was written perfectly in terms of like, I, there's not there's nothing I can tell about there's, there's nothing I can say about the writing uh, that would be negative in terms of the writing. It was it was excellent, the best I've seen so far. Um, maybe just one step uh, back from Winter Soldier. But the writing by far. Also, um, this uh, the action, like I said, this is action-packed, but it's not uh, visual noise as well, you know? No. It's not just a bunch of scenes that you don't really understand. They make sure that as the, uh, as part of the audience member, you because at the end of the day, it's, just, it's your favorite superhero fighting, your favorite superhero. They want to make sure that you enjoy yourself, that you remember it, you know, that you want to watch it again, and they did a very good job with that. Two cons, I would say, how Zemo was developed as a character. And second con, the fact that this movie didn't go uh, an extra 20 minutes. (laughs) 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 No, I haven't said that in a while. Because this movie, even leaving this movie, it was really heavy. It was a lot of information. It was a lot to process. But I just felt like it it was already 2 hours and 27 minutes, I know. But I just felt like I could have, personally, I won't watch you. But I feel like I could have endured a little bit more. But yet again, <laughs> like this movie is edited perfectly. It, it, it's not. It, it wasn't missing twenty minutes of footage, whereas no. Batman v Superman was probably missing forty five minutes an hour. <laughs> this movie was really, really very well edited, and I'm not complaining about it. I'm just. I, I, I just. I just it wish was, I would have seen a little more of the fights. And it was um, so good, you wanted yeah. more. I actually, you know what? Usually the intro, the um, introduction scene of the movie, the first act. Is like usually the act that tires me the more because I'm like, oh, you have to set everything up. I'm a little bored, but I could have spent a little more time in Legos. <laughs> That's know? true. I could have spent a little That's more time true. in Legos. That's true. Right yeah. away at the very beginning of How this movie, you, you're right into the action. Mm. Um, my two pros about this movie, as you said, the writing. Um, what I will say is the structure. Not only the writing, but everybody, their, 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 the, all the plot points were well rounded out rounded out all the plot points all the storylines were really rounded out and well crafted it was a very well structured movie everything there was nothing out of place there were no scenes that you were saying oh there's something missing here or there was no like rude cut to something else and you're like oh man there's except one that you mentioned in the very end but like yeah there's nothing that is really missing there's as far as the structure from top to bottom everything is solid in this pick and look for something exactly that's when you start nitpicking because everything is structurally sound because i had two of those moments for example the the iconic moment of captain america racing his shield against iron man's uh fire beam and um you know they're just like getting on their knees and they're uh, uh just forcing their powers upon each other, uh, their, their strength upon each other, and then it cuts straight to Zemo. Yes. And then it goes back to that scene, and I was like, I could have had 10 more seconds of that scene. I felt like it was too short. And, and well, it you wanted it. You wanted it, and I understand yeah, why you wanted it. Exactly. But as far as the structure, that's my first pro. Uh, the second pro is, I mean, the, the action. The action is just spectacular. Really this is. movie is full of... Just scenes that you want to rewatch. I never rewatch movies, honestly. I rarely rewatch, especially when I'm doing a review. That's when I will rewatch a movie. But I watched this movie four or five times. It, it's ridiculous. And I just kept going back for more. Yeah. I, I mean, there are certain pieces of this movie that are just perfect and excellent. And you just want to come right back to it. Um, two cons. The first con is what I mentioned earlier about uh, when Black Widow. Well, like Black that. Widow is not well used in this movie. And I think that she's only included because she has to be included there's no specific role for her to play she doesn't feel she feels like if you took her out you wouldn't be missing anything and that's when you know that if you trim fat that there's still some fat to be trimmed you know if you take out a piece just like jenga 
If it, everything falls down, that's when you know that piece is essential and that you cannot cut it out. If you cut out Black uh, Black Widow out of this movie, I don't think you lose anything. And that's, a, and that's the saddest part. So that's one yeah. of the big cons that I had. Um, another con was one scene in particular where Captain America gets his motivation at a funeral. You know what I'm talking about. You guys do too if you've seen the movie. I was actually going to mention that, the, 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 the speech, but in yeah. your case, it's the angle, right? No, the, the, the speech to me, the, the, the speech is fine, especially because those are the words that Captain America says very famously in the comic. Mm -hmm. But the, to me, it felt forced as far as Everything else in the movie, everything else in the movie respects your intelligence. Yeah, they don't need to spell things out for you. They, Marvel knows their their audience, audience to a T. Marvel, I really think that they've studied their audience and they know exactly who they need to cater to because they don't spend useless time explaining backstories, saying this and that. Especially if you already know, they move through it at a very quick pace. Not missing anything but they move through it at a very quick pace the movie basically tells you yo listen that's how it is and come on let's move on but one scene in particular went against that and that's the scene with captain america at the funeral of uh, agent carter uh, is it agent carter yeah peggy, yeah, carter. It, peggy carter and um you see this angle where her her niece that we find out which is agent mccarty that was fighting uh, that was spying on him in uh, captain america civil war agent she goes 13. and she gives a uh, uh, what would have been a very emotional and powerful speech, but the way that it's shot and the angles and making it very obvious that she's talking to him, to me, that spoiled a little bit of the impact and the moment of that uh, of that scene because it was basically force-fed, whereas the rest of the movie was very, very lenient with it and saying, hey, let's just move on, you know? So that, to me, was jarring because it didn't really fit with the rest of the movie. It wasn't bad, but it was just really weird. Mm -hmm. And that's me nitpicking. Those are my only two cons in this movie. Yeah, because that's it. Again, those are just things that you have to really that's it. look for and kind of. But you can easily just say, ah, fuck it. You know what I mean? Yes. So, I but yo, listen, let's talk about moments that you were just like, holy shit. Give me your top three moments of this movie. Top three. Come on, right off the bat Black Panther, Shadow. Before he jumps on Bucky and yes. almost kills oh him. Oh my god! Black <laughs> Panther was Black fucking Panther. Bucky up. Oh, Black son. Panther, yeah. Fuck Black. a super soldier. I got yeah. this. And he's just taking. Oh my god! He's just taking helicopter fire like it's nothing. This is fifty cal ammunition. Mm -hmm. Pretty much nothing. So Black Panther, as well as the airport scene, of course, and the final battle between Bucky, Iron Man, and Captain America, because that final battle, um, it's. It's not a good civil war, man. It's just like, let's destroy everything we've worked for so far. Let's just shove it right to shit and just destroy it. Which is, at the end, man, I, when Captain America raises his shield and shoves it in the arc reactor, I was like, oh. And, and it, it, it was, oh, man, just thinking of, like, I don't even know how to impress how about it how emotional that scene was and how I felt watching him. And when like Tony screams, you don't deserve this shield. My father made that shield. And, and you and you just, and you just saved the motherfucker who killed him. Yeah. And there was another because there was a lot of moments that you could have missed. For example, when uh when uh when Tony grabs Bucky and he's about to she's about to kill him and he says, Do you at least remember my father? And he says, I remember Howard. And you can tell that this is Bucky as himself, like understanding that he's killed a friend. Like, he actually says even something even deeper than that. He says, "I remember all of them. Yeah, all of the all of my victims. I yeah. remember all of yeah. them." Yeah, but yeah, I definitely understand that. So, what else? One more. You have one more moment. One more moment. Um, I I'm obviously gonna say the airport scene, but I I, I want to leave that, that I, I, I want to <laughs> leave that aside for now because. Um, you said that I, I brought that up here, man. Legos. Legos. Thank I, you. I, Legos. The Legos Thank was... You. People will overlook Legos because the movie just becomes insane by the time you... By, by, once you're near the end. Um, but Legos, I think that was... I was very skeptical of whether or not I would really buy the new Avengers team without Tony, Hulk, and Thor. But I was like, nope, okay. <laughs> All right. Work. And I, I and they were not missing this movie. They were they're mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. the movie knows that you're not fucking stupid and it tells you, Hey, where's Thank Hulk? You. Where's Thor? I don't know. Okay. All That's right, funny. Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> and they do this that. movie doesn't give a no, fuck. This movie like and I love it. That, uh, I really love that. But overall I think it's it's my favorite 
superhero movie of all time. Oh yeah. And um, yeah. Oh I'm man. Wrong. Top three moments for me. Uh anything Black Panther. I know it's a cop out, but anytime Black Panther is on screen, I'm just going ham. Especially I would have to say specifically, there's this one scene, which is the um Germany chase down scene. For multiple reasons. First of all, this is the first time we see Black Panther in action. So you see him chasing down Bucky. You see all the cool stunts that they do. Mm -hmm. Second of all, that scene incorporates so many shout outs to other iconic scenes. There's this one moment where Captain America is driving a, a, a car that he commandeered. And um, he just runs out of the car while still running while the car is flipping back. And you see the car following him. And that was really Bruce, like, it reminded me of a Bruce Willis scene where he just runs out of the car while still shooting. Great shot. Um, you see Black Panther jumping to Bucky's bike and just grabbing it and just scratching it off. Great shot. So that's one of those shots. The second one has to be the Giant Man reveal. The Giant Man yeah. reveal to me was amazing. Spidey's reaction uh, Scott Lang's fucking reaction when he knows that he's huge and it, it worked everything about that scene was amazing that laugh was oh amazing. my god what? that laugh was amazing <laughs> and then the third the third is something more global it's not one specific scene but it's something more global I really like the way they treated humanity as a whole in this movie I'll humanity, explain humanity is not stupid yeah stupid. no I'll explain why because a lot of movies when they go globally they, they'll Take, you know, stock footage of a city. Like, let's say you're going to Paris. So, you you know, there's certain stock footage that you'll show. And anytime they went to Africa, anytime they went to somewhere else, anytime they went uh, otherwise, they didn't show the normal stock footage. Like, yo, let's show the Serengeti or let's show a lion and say, hey, we're in Africa. Let's show a jungle. No, also no it wasn't stupid. They didn't, uh, they didn't disrespect people. Mm -hmm. They show people in the city living how people live. They show people at the UN dealing how people live and all of that everywhere else people were diverse enough and people were represented in a very at, to me anyways it was a very thoughtful man because marvel does a very great job at incorporating also uh cities and countries that don't exist and making them feel real you know and, um so you go to wakanda and you're like yeah yeah, yeah. you go to sokovia and you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you're like stuff like that that, that, that kind of thing like they, they 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 do a very good job what I mean, when they actually recreate their own world and uh, incorporate cities or uh, their own version of certain cities or their own version of, uh, or actually come up with brand new cities and places that you've never seen, they make them feel very realistic. You know, when I go to Wakanda, I'm like, yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like this, because at the end you see Wakanda. Right? That's you see true. Wakanda, right? That's where you go. I know. So overall, how do you rate that movie? All right. So now let's talk about the rating. I mean, first off, I have to explain my rating system. Now that we're going to be doing our reviews together, we need to establish this rating system i do not believe in uh, in the numbered rating systems those don't work for me i just classify and categorize movies yeah, yeah. so from going from the bottom to the top i'll explain it so first off we have the absolute worst movies in a category that i'll call dog shit straight dog shit from zero to 15 percent this is bullshit movies nothing to be redeemed just burn them burn them burn them second category right above that that's the pimp hand so something went wrong and you just deserve that pimp hand. You just Fantastic need to Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Something went wrong. It was a great premise, but something happened. The studio got into it. The actors got into it. The director got into it. Mm -hmm. Someone needs a pimp hand. So yeah. from 15% to 40%, that's the pimp hand category. Then there's the middling review, and that's Batman versus Superman. It's I, you know? Mm -hmm. From 40 to 60%, that's I. Then there's dope movies, which is 60 to 80%. Then we have classics from 80 to 95%. And then from 95% up to 100, legendary movies, flawless movies. Nothing to be said, not one frame to be changed. And not a lot of those movies exist. So right now, with that scheme, with that scale, where do you rate? Classics. Uh, people, wow. some people, Classic. Some, 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 I know some people knowing that Captain America is my favorite superhero, that uh, Civil War is my favorite storyline. People would expect me to just rate it as legendary. I think this movie was classic because that's all it really needed to be, and they knew that. Uh, 
and they knew that this movie was all would also set up something legendary you know which is the infinity war with all those characters also being held by the uh russo brothers as well so i think um i think this movie didn't need to be legendary it just needed to be well it just needed to be classic i mean classic it's 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 very good it's It's, it's fantastic it's my favorite superhero movie of all time it's a classic i I can definitely say the the reason why i'm not gonna say it's legendary is because it sets up something that can be legendary and um, this movie knows that. I think they knew that they, they were not trying to raise the stakes to the point that they're like, let's destroy New York. You know what yeah. I mean? Or something like that. <laughs> they were like, let's just save that for our Infinity War. They were holding back, not in a way that you were like, like The Walking Dead does it to the point where you're like, oh, well, they, they don't want to put everything in one. Dead. Oh, yeah, fuck this yeah. role. But The Walking Dead does this thing where they're like, ah, we, 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 don't, we don't know if you're going to come back. So uh, we're not going to show you that right away. You're going to have to come back next year. <laughs> you know? and they, sh- they didn't and, and, hold back. But in their case, they're like, we, we delivered on all that. And you know that we have some more. Because even the end credit scene, what would have made this even more epic after having seen... Um, what kind of would have had would have been to see it. I can see with Thanos, like you know, jumping in the ship, ready to declare war to Earth, whatever. But they're like, yeah. no, no, we're no, just gonna no. hold back. We're just gonna hold back. This we're not gonna true. set that up so far. Where there's so much going on in that universe that I, as a geek, as a comic book nerd, I wish I would have seen, such as you know, uh, the way Guardians of the Galaxy set up the Eternals, um, the, um, the, uh, the 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 Kree Empire. Uh, the uh, Nova stuff, and I, I I I can't wait. The reason I can't wait for the Marvel universe. Well, to go I think cosmic, Guardi- Guardians you know? Two is gonna touch yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. Of the, about that. But that's yeah. why I can't wait for the universe to go cosmic, and I I, I just geek out on that. Mm-hmm. And they they were really like, okay, let's just wait it out and just chill for a little bit. This is How about true. you. Anyway, that's my explanation. So I'm you sure. gave it a classic. I'm gonna have to give it a classic too. I mean, I this it. movie is not perfect. It's not perfect. But goddamn, is it ever good? Yeah. I mean, this movie is satisfying mm-hmm. in many, many different ways. And we talked about the hype at the beginning of this video. And I can safely say everything you thought was hype for in this movie, it completely delivers. It really everything does. you were waiting for, it completely delivers. And that's the stark opposite from Batman vs. Superman, which... The hype was even bigger for that movie. It was. It was and the biggest. It, of, it was the just point, a You know what down. pisses me out is the fact that, I, again, <laughs> we're not trying to destroy Batman v Superman. That's not what we're doing here. No. But Batman v Superman actually hurt Captain America's Civil War at the box office. Captain America's Civil War made $180 million at the box office on its opening weekend. This is fantastic. This is more money than I'll ever have in my bank account. This is more money that we'll ever be able to stack up together. That being said, this movie could have done better yet again because of the symbiotic uh, relationship between Marvel and DC. If DC sucks and DC p- presents something that's just... Uh, that's not very good, then it affects Marvel movies because as a genre, they're the only two... Uh, uh, powerhouses. powerhouses in that yes. genre. So if DC comes starts pulling out shit, then people, for example, uh, we've already seen a superhero movie about two superheroes fighting each other. People look at Civil War and they're like, I don't know if I'm gonna go watch it because I didn't really like that movie Superman, you know? Yeah. So there's no Marvel versus versus DC thing. They both need to be good. And the fact that one of them that came out just two months ago was so not it was not as well received as they could have been actually did have an impact on on the box office yet again but captain america civil war did fantastic but just to tell you why it, it kind of it's something i wanted to point out if I, that, that kind of annoys me a little bit it you know? does annoy me too but speaking of this movie this movie is excellent i have to give it a classic rating everything is thematics the storyline the characters the acting the action the mm-hmm. visuals the, the the presentation the the hype and the delivery and the they delivered on that hype everything tied up in a nice little bow i went back and saw it twice three four five times no, i might just have to know. see it again in, in a couple of days tomorrow mm-hmm. i don't care this movie is a classic it's excellent as you said one of the best superhero movies ever made, if not the best. That's how good this is. Exactly. So there we go, Pimp, and there you there have you go, it. Guys. So that's our review for Captain America Civil War. Let me know if you agree with us. Let me know if you have anything else to say, anything we missed. What was your favorite piece of this movie? What was your favorite scene in this movie? Hit them comments down below. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And I'm going to see y'all next time. This is Rob Black and Vlad signing out. Peace out.
Peace.